St. Peter's Church was the venue for the 15th AGM, hosted once again by the chairman of the Campaign for Borders Rail, Simon Walton. Three key speakers took part, Bam Nuttall's communications manager, Stuart Mackay, Mike Keane, the UK Rail Development Director for Abellio, and first, Richard Morris, chairman of the Settle to Carlisle line. All credit to you for getting a goodly part of the Waverley line reopened. I think that's a fantastic achievement and we look forward to further lengths of it being opened in future. We, of course, would love to see the complete line reinstated all the way to Carlisle, then we could join up. It would be wonderful. To me, uh, it's a no-brainer. Extend to Hoyk. Hoyk looks to Edinburgh. Once you get over the watershed to Langham and Newcastleton, people look to Carlisle, but it's got to be done, hasn't it? As soon as possible. And then after that, please extend on to Carlisle. The English government probably won't do it. Work on your politicians. Get us a service all the way to Carlisle. We can join up and the future will be very rosy. Mike Keane from Abellio illustrated how important the Borders Railway is to this country and explained what happens when Abellio take over the reins in April. The very first meeting we had after we had won the franchise was on borders. It wasn't on whether we we're going to get the train leases in place. It wasn't on whether other stuff we we're going to do. It was on borders. So I think what, what that tells me is that it's an extremely important project um, to Transport Scotland but also to us. The first group have done a, done a really good job in recruiting drivers for the borders. We'll take them over on the, on the 1st of April when we take the franchise over. We'll do a, a fairly extensive period of driver training and route knowledge. So the drivers will run up and down the line, they'll get used to it, they'll understand where they need to brake and where they need to accelerate and how the line operates. We'll also go through a process with BAM and with Network Rail about accepting the stations. We'll put people in to operate those stations. We'll put the conductors into Tweed Bank and um, make sure they're fully trained. Um, so all of that is almost business as usual for a railway. It's extremely important to make sure that we're running the trains on the 6th of, of September. And then the second element of borders is the launch. So part of our bid focused very, very um, specifically on the launch. So we've allocated from, from our own budget um, £75,000 to promote the launch, the three-day the three-day weekend. Um, we've put into our bid to provide a steam train for that launch event. Um, and we've also put in our bid to do a lot of marketing. Um, we will start marketing the Borders Railway from the day we take over the franchise. And we will use that to build a real perception and an understanding of what Borders is. Um, when we were preparing for the franchise, we were out in Scotland. And a lot of people understand what Borders is and a lot of people know what it is, but a lot of people don't. And I think really building a campaign around borders and making sure that it's well understood, people recognise it and people want to use it is absolutely fundamental. Stuart Mackay from BAM is a regular contributor to the programme and we often see him dressed in orange, but at the AGM he was a little bit more formal and he spoke of the challenges his company faced in delivering the railway to the borders and took us back two years when construction work began. At that time we were, we were mobilised on site in this in Moncton Hall area and that's where we were tackling the, what was certainly the biggest risk for the Borders Railway um, was the, the challenge of mine remediation through Midlothian. Um, for those of you that don't know, the, the, the top section of uh, Borders Railway, the bit that goes from the North Tyne Point, just round the corner from New Craig Hall Station, to Kingsgate, is not on the historical alignment. Um, it's actually, um, it, it cuts across um, through the site of Moncton Hall Colliery. Um, and at that time, there were, there were more than 20, um, 20 rigs drilling. And I think in total, we managed to drill the same vertical miles as you would need to get to Manchester. Um, and we've pumped tens of thousands of tonnes worth of grout into these mine cavities. We, al we also found a lot of cavities which, um, which hadn't been documented. 2013 was all about earthworks. We moved 1.5 million tonnes um, of earth. Um, and that's from the railway corridor. That does not include all the additional materials that we've moved. Um, to give you an example of that, some of the ballast that, we, the ballast that we've brought in, um, we're talking about 10,000 Arctic deliveries of, um, on the road of ballast. Um, sleepers, we have 97,000 sleepers and round about the same amount of, of heavy goods traffic to bring the sleepers to site. So it's a really important um, milestone in our development as a company. And we've been involved in looking at this contract and 
tracking it for about three years. So for it to culminate in us winning it is, is an amazing thing and we're really, really pleased and we've got lots of good things in our bid that we want to um, over time roll out into Scotland and really transform the railway in Scotland. A, a big theme of our bid was making it a truly national railway and a lot of our initiatives um, align with that goal. It's very, very rare for a railway company to open a new piece of track. Um, we, we, we're owned and we're um, operated by Dutch Railways. They've opened some track in Holland, but again, not much. So for us to be able to do it here in, um, in Scotland is amazing. We take it very seriously. It's a really important thing for us. We've got a lot of resources planned and initiatives planned to make borders a really outstanding railway. Absolutely key to that will be integrated ticketing, so a smart card, and we've got big plans to roll that out quickly um, to make sure that it integrates with both um, bus, with uh, PT travel like um, SPT and Lothian bus and, um, and the tram. So, I mean, that's really a key part of it. And then we, we're putting in bikes and onward journey opportunities for people. Um, you know, one of our goals as a transport company is to make sure people don't use the car and use the train instead, where they have to use a car, and a lot of people in the borders have to use a car, to make sure there's adequate car parking, that that car parking fit for purpose, and to make sure that, that people experience a really good service from when they wake up in the morning and decide to use the train, and to when they arrive at their destination. As part of our bid, we will bring in 70 new trains. Those trains will run between Edinburgh and Glasgow, and up to Alloa. They won't run on borders. Borders is a diesel railway, so we'll use some of the... Um, some of the existing diesel stock, mainly 158s and 170s, which are good trains. Um, but those brand new trains, which are Hitachi units, will, will mainly do the Edinburgh-Glasgow route. So yeah, I mean, it's, it's a really important part of our bid, so is Borders, and it's something that will complement people when they arrive in Edinburgh, and if they, particularly if they're going to Glasgow, um, they'll have an amazing new experience with those new trains. I felt terribly disappointed. I, th I felt it was... Um, you know, it, it was one of those, say, the three things on which I'd campaigned and I'd lost. Uh, I was very, very disappointed about it. And I, of course, I was on the last train out of Galashiels. And my remaining political ambition is to be on the first train back into Galashiels. It was very strange because there was a lot of publicity at Galashiels when uh, we, the, the train was flagged off and I got on board, shook hands with the engine driver and all the rest of it. Another big demonstration at Hoyk where a mock coffin addressed to the Minister of Transport was put onto the guards van. And then the press all disappeared. They thought, that's it, it's over. And in fact, the real drama was at Newcastleton. Um, and the people of the village were, were uh, standing across the, the level crossing where the gates closed for the train. And I'd gone to bed. I, I was on the, in my sleeper. And uh, some of the, uh, it must have been the local station master, I suppose, came along the, the, the track with a lamp shouting for my name, and I heard this, what are they wanting me for? Um, and he said, people are not letting the train through, would you come and speak to them? So I had to get dressed and come and, and speak from the footbridge, and uh, I thanked them for their day. It was a bitterly cold night, it was January, freezing cold, uh, and I thanked them for the demonstration, and. Uh, suggested that we should now perhaps leave, and uh, they said, no, we're staying there, and whereupon the the parish minister, Bryden Maiden, was arrested. And that, of course, really set the cat among the pigeons. There was no way they were going to move. So eventually, I negotiated with the people in the in, in standing on the crossing that if I went to the police station and got the, the minister out with no charges, would they then go? And that was agreed. So, so we went to the police station, got him out, and uh, no charges were made against him. And there was a sequel to that because police reinforcements had to be sent from Hoyk and they came charging up the, the, the road at great speed. Um, and one of the policemen was the minister's son. And after, I didn't know this till later, but after the train went through, they all retired to the manse for coffee and biscuits and whiskey. And <laughs> it's the only time uh, a Scottish London Express was held up by people standing on the, on the line. That's what, in the entire history of the railway, nothing like that had ever happened. And of course, the train arrived in St Pancras Station uh, a good two or two and a half hours late. Um, but you know, the press missed it all. <laughs>